uh, Professor Zhengge and uh, Peking University STL to bring us together here. And uh, after yesterday's very fruitful discussion, uh, I'm very glad I have this opportunity to open up the morning session here uh, with my observation, uh, perhaps a, a, a narrower observation, uh, the area compared to the yesterday's discussion. I'm focused on the copyright infringement segment, segment and talking about the uh, algorithm uh, recommendation and the platform liability. <clears throat> uh, first, first, I want to share my view about the dis different perspectives uh, in current, maybe both from the practical and the theoretical uh, 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 discussions uh, uh, about the algorithm recommendation and the platform liability. Uh, as you can see, uh, IP or uh, the copyright infringe infringement uh, problem will uh, take the second type. Uh, it's about uh, uh, when we talk about the infringement against personal rights, private rights, uh, we talk about uh, what kind of liabilities uh, should the platform bear um, against the IP infringement or other uh, very common uh, 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 cases of the infringement. For, for example, right to, uh, against the right to reputation and the portrait, uh, especially against the public figures. Uh, but first type uh, will probably uh, respond to yesterday's discussion about the uh, governmental or administrative side of regulation against algorithm, uh, especially, uh, for example, uh, many uh, speakers uh, talked about the uh, algorithm uh, regulation published by the Cyberspace Administration, Wang Xingban, uh, mainly focusing on content governance. And also, uh, Professor Hu uh, talked about algorithm as platform, platform rules, and the subject Liability, subject liability against um, uh, almost all the platforms. Uh, in this regard, actually, platforms usually we think they are taking the first or the uh, major or direct in, uh, uh, liability uh, in uh, uh, provide very healthy uh, uh, content environment and uh, to protect uh, uh, some special group of uh, uh, people. Uh, they, they they are the first. Um, liability bearer, and in the infringement uh, 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 scenario, uh, we're actually talking about the platform as an uh, indirect uh, liability bearer. Uh, we are talking about notice and takedown, which is actually uh, transplanted from the DMCA from the United States, uh, beginning from the Copyright Act, and now actually Chinese uh, civil law, uh, the code has actually uh, expanded the notice and takedown rule to all area of the uh, private rights protection, uh, um, expanding from the copyright to uh, all area of the, the, the personal right. Uh, this is actually I want, I want to focus today, this part. And another perspective is from the competition law side, both anti-monopoly and unfair competition. And the algorithm uh, is regarded as a way or tool for the platforms of all the, the, the internet companies to gain competitive uh, advantage to cause competitive damage, and also uh, we are talking about uh, from the, the competition law side. Okay, uh, let's go to the point of the copyright infringement. Uh, the algorithm recommendation actually is a new business model compared to uh, such as the P2P um, uh, uh, distribution or the uh, search engine or the storage space provider. Uh, 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 we call it the cyber disk provi uh, provider service. And uh, uh, when we go to this, uh, we call it uh, 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 mobile internet error, and uh, the uh, algorithm recommendation has been the major or the very dominant way for users to get touched to the uh, content, including the pirated version of the pirated uh, videos, which is very hot debated, debated or discussed currently in Chinese practice and the theory field. Uh, to summarize, there are two key questions in determining um, the copyright infringement of the liability, uh, of, the, of the platform uh, in uh, algorithm uh, recommendation uh, 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 scenario. The first one is, is this recommendation uh, mode actually changed the platform's legal status or changed the legal nature of the platform's behavior? Uh, Traditionally, when we talk about the earlier uh, mode, business mode, we will call the platform as an indirect 
um, infringer, uh, which means the users actually directly uh, provide the infringing content, and uh, the uh, platform actually bear the uh, contributory or vicarious. Uh, under Chinese uh, tort law, uh, it's mainly a contributory infringement liability. Uh, is this like? recommendation mode actually change the platform into a direct infringer? This is the first issue. Uh, generally, uh, currently the court and the scholars usually think, that they hold that the answer is generally no. Uh, it's not, not changing, it's still a contributory infringer. But in some very extreme cases, very special cases, it's not in uh, copyright field, but actually in the uh, right to reputation and the right to uh, portrait the cases, um, one court, uh, internet court actually, hope that because the platform actually um, organized and uh, designed the way for the users to provide the infringing content, so the uh, platform was regarded as the direct infringer. But that's very uh, special cases, very extreme cases, and not um, uh, show, and no such case show in copyright infringement uh, field. Uh, and the second question, maybe is more important or difficult one, is if there is still uh, only contributory infringement liability to the platform, is there any uh, trend or any decision about a generally higher duty of care when the platform adopt the algorithm uh, recommendation mode? And this is actually not uh, formed a common uh, a con consensus. They are still uh, debating. And the, uh, on the right of my slide is the uh, very typical uh, and uh, um, famous case about uh, one TV series. And the, the uh, plaintiff is Ai Qi Yi, and the defendant is the Tou Tiao. Uh, and they are, uh, the, the plaintiff argues that since the Tou Tiao has not only uh, provide uh, pirated version of the content uh, which users could search uh, to, to get. But also, when users uh, browse some of the pirated version of the short videos, the app will uh, positively recommend other pirated versions, just like the, the, the page we showed uh, as the APP's um, the, 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 uh, the, the page. And the uh, Yan uh, Xi Gong Lue is the famous and the popular TV series which uh, to, uh, was, was pirated. And the first trial of the court actually hold that uh, uh, there's some higher uh, duty of care should be bared by the platform, but the, the, sec uh, the, the second trial actually settled. Uh, because the two parties uh, have agree, uh, reached agreement to collaborate. <clears throat> so uh, opinions, the current opinions. Uh, the court actually, uh, both in the Yan Xi Gong Lue, the previous case, and other many uh, other uh, similar cases, uh, they have get some of the opinions. Uh, the first one uh, we have mentioned, the liability of the platform is still contributory, uh, but not direct. Uh, that's uh, almost a consensus. And the second one is the court actually very clearly said that uh, the uh, algorithm uh, recommendation is, has substantial non-infringing users. That means they, uh, the platforms are adopting this uh, uh, recommendation techni technology not only to uh, uh, recommend pirated, but also other uh, legal or other uh, 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 non-infringing uh, videos or content. Uh, uh, that we all know that's from the Sony case, right? And uh, but. Uh, compared to this uh, uh, opinion, the court also said that, but compared to the, origin, uh, the, the, uh, the traditional providers, service providers, for example, the storage space providers, uh, who do not really doing recommendation, uh, the algorithm recommenders, they should bear more duty of care because of more technical advantage since the Technology has been developed. The court held that the platform should have more technology advantage and they are receiving more profit and they are expanding the infringement risk. So we can uh, actually see from the second opinion, the second uh, line and the third line, there's some potential conflict. That shows that the court 
a judge is not really think very clearly or have formed a very clear solution for this problem. And also in special cases, when the judge uh, applying the rules, uh, they actually do not really uh, have the clear opinion that there is a generally higher standard uh, for duty of care applied to all the uh, algorithm recommendation uh, website. They are actually combining different kinds of elements. For example, they are uh, thinking about the cost of preventing and the original rules of the algorithm, uh, the dimension of the users, uh, also the measures already taken by the, uh, by the platforms. And um, in most of the cases, the court actually said there is uh, infringement and the platform has not fulfilled its uh, obligation to uh, 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 fulfill its duty of care. There are also many scholars publishing articles about and some of the scholars there in the side of uh, uh, promoting the greater uh, general higher standard for duty of care. Um, but their uh, logic, uh, their arguments are mainly, we can summarize into that, talking about the uh, algorithm recommendation mode actually uh, uh, caused more infringing risks, and uh, uh, they have more uh, technical capability to identify and prevent, and they are earning more profit. So they are uh, arguing that they are actually a failure of notice and takedown rules and uh, um, support a general higher standard of duty of care. Then we should go back to the uh, some very original or key issues uh, to question or challenge the uh, 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 the support, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, argument the private court and the, the scholars have hold. First of all, I think we should to look at the algorithm. Uh, is a general algorithm uh, or a general standard applied to all algorithm, or we should to uh, try to distinguish what kind of algorithm? Because we know that uh, uh, algorithm are not have a general same function. So we cannot just get the control conclusion based on a, 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 a abstract algorithm. And uh, we have this collaborative filtering system, collaborative filtering uh, system, uh, which is commonly a typical way for the uh, website, the content website to provide uh, contents, to recommend contents. We also have a different set of uh, algorithm uh, could probably will do the content filtering. And also we could probably imagine uh, algorithm especially uh, designed to identify infringement and recommend infringing uh, contents. We can split all the algorithm into different kinds. Uh, for example, uh, from the right side of the picture, uh, which I copy from the, the uh, in, uh, web uh, internet. Uh, from the, uh, this is an example for the collaborative filtering. Let's see what kind of function the algorithm actually pays. Uh, from the left side is the users, right? The user A, B, and C. And the, uh, the right side is about the, the content or the product uh, the users prefer. Uh, the red line uh, refers to uh, the user A prefers. Uh, it, he probably prefers uh, uh, product A and C, and uh, the algorithm will discover that user C also prefers product A and C, and also pro uh, user C prefers product D too. Then the algorithm will try to summarize the common points, and uh, uh, for the blue line, the algorithm will try to recommend the product D to product A because it analyzes that the product, uh, the user A probably will prefer uh, product D. So in this whole uh, procedure, uh, the algorithm is actually uh, identify and uh, select and recommend the content or the product based on the preference of the users. Of course, other maybe together with other uh, characteristics of the users and the products. But it's quite possible that the algorithm has no ability to uh, understand whether the product A, B, C, D is infringing content. content. Uh, it, as some technical experts has uh, uh, described, the algorithm is much like a preliminary school uh, student. Uh, they just do what the 
uh, designers teach them to do, teach them to doing the collaborative filter, but they could not really know what is infringing IP and what is not. So at, from this uh, perspective of function, we probably need to do, to in a special cases, or in designing the rules, we need to first of all to understand uh, what is the collaborative filtering mechanism filtering, right? Uh, if it's only filtering the preferences uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, the better uh, user experiences, uh, probably or it's quite, uh, it's quite uh, certain that the algorithm has not uh, enhanced the platform or use the platform's ability to identify infringement uh, materials. Uh, this is about the, the, the functional perspective to distinguish different algorithms and to understand uh, how the ability has been changed in terms of uh, identifying infringement. And also there's another question, if there's more risk of infringement and the more benefits received by the platform, is it necessarily uh, a higher duty of care should be established? Then probably we should back to a uh, hand formula. And uh, actually in every field of technical or business uh, innovation, we comes to this problem, right? If there's new, new models, there will be new risks and new uh, benefits then we need to balance which way is more efficient. We need to considering all the traditional elements that we have been talking about, but the, uh, uh, we should reply to the uh, algorithm recommendation field. For example, we need to uh, balance the harmfulness and the nature and the benefits of the uh, recommendation system. Uh, we should take the overall picture into our consideration rather than to only think about the IP uh, infringement because we need to think about the recommendation system are actually recommending uh, uh, legal for contents uh, actually to expand uh, the uh, benefits of the whole industry uh, by uh, recommending all different kinds of contents. And uh, the infringement part probably will be only the very small uh, fracture. And also the chance of uh, uh, occurrence of damage and the cost of preventive measures. Uh, if we're talking about an uh, algorithm recommendation system only can identify uh, contents based on preference, user's preference rather than infringing or not, then uh, if we need to perform to take ex effective preventive measures that will probably cause them to uh, design a totally different set of algorithm that will be probably very high cost compared to the holdings of the court and the, court and the scholars previous mentioned. So uh, maybe as a previous, uh, preliminary conclusion, I'm, suppose, uh, I'm uh, 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 proposing a different picture of the uh, allocation scheme for the prevention cost. Uh, from so-called one side duty of care. When we talk about duty of care, we, we think that the right of holder, uh, the right holders, uh, they are deserved protection and uh, probably do not need to do anything, but they can ask the platform to do all the duty of care things, right? But we probably sh should shift from the one side duty of care to a duty of collaboration. We could see uh, what kind of preventive uh, measures is more costly if we uh, allocate the burden or the cost to the right holders because they have more information. Uh, they have the original copy of their works and uh, they should take measures to uh, doing a uh, significant part of the infringement identification and the monitor monitoring technologies, including the algorithms. And uh, they should uh, probably could develop different notification types sometimes probably will be more urgent, sometimes will probably will be more general, and they should provide uh, original works which could be compared by the platform, uh, because the platform probably do not, uh, cannot uh, compare uh, effectively if we do not have, they do not have the original copies. For the platform, or we call it the, the defendant, uh, they should do some preliminary filtering, for example, some cost effective uh, filtering uh, the uh, text words on the title of the videos. Uh, probably that will be a textual filtration is uh, probably very uh, cost 
uh, uh, not, not so costly, and they could, should do very timely uh, taking down uh, once they receive the notice. And also, they uh, should take measures to identify some very typical high-risk scenarios. For, for example, some users have uploaded uh, pirating versions again and again uh, with, with, uh, very, uh, uh, with many uh, notifications that have been uh, sent against. Also, the platforms should uh, take error a correct mechanism in, um, in case there's a, a mistake uh, against the users, the legitimate, uh, leg legitimate users. So from the duty of care, we should adopt a, a perspective from single cases uh, to a overall uh, cost evaluation uh, from a, a static perspective of, to a dynamic and the multiple side of the uh, Rule mechanism. That's my <laughs> very preliminary proposal to to solve this, so, uh, to provide a solution. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Professor Liu. Professor Friedman, please. Uh, thank you, Gilad, and uh, thank you, uh, SDL, and uh, all the students who were uh, who made it through the rain and uh, who were uh, who are helping to organize this. Um, and great to, uh, to see all the distinguished um, colleagues and um, people online. <clears throat> so, um, algorithms uh, are not only used to, to recommend, but also the opposite of recommendation, which is dissuasion. So, the, in this case, uh, reduction of certain content. Um, and therefore, borrowing the sentence of the... Um, of this um, Buddhist uh, school uh, and applying it to platforms, you can say uh, perhaps the cunning one should not have recourse to either existence or non-existence. In other words, deranking or the, uh, the, the reduction of traffic. So an alternative title could be uh, unauthorized content in limbo, uh, hoovering between Dante's hell and uh, heaven. All right, so it is a great pleasure to, um, to be in the same panel as Professor Liu Xiaotian, uh, who already spoke about the, the, the tough love triangle between platforms, users, and copyright holders. So my article uh, focuses on uh, two algorithmic twilight zones between uh, platforms operating in the algorithmic twilight zone uh, between presenting search results and blocking them. Um, in other words, uh, de-ranking or reduction of traffic to certain content. And also automatic content recognition algorithms that do not distinguish between unauthorized illegal content and unauthorized legal content. So to stimulate the, uh, the investments in the internet, it was considered uh, necessary to immunize uh, platforms against liability for copyright infringement of the users. A safe harbor was established uh, for online service providers uh, in the DMCA in 1998, already mentioned before, uh, the e-commerce directive in 1999, and in China in the regulations for the protection of the right of communication through the information network of 2006. But it was hard for copyright holders to find the primary infringer. Um, if they find them, um, they might not be in the right jurisdiction. If they find them and they were in the right jurisdiction, they might not have the financial means. And so therefore, the copyright holders still went after those with deep pockets, namely the uh, platforms, which de facto led to, uh, to basically um, strict liability. Uh, this was also more or less codified in the uh, directive for copyright um, in the digital single market in the EU. So if you have strict liability, you can imagine that this leads to overprotection by platforms. They, want, they don't want to become liable, of course, right? So no noise, but bias, as already pointed out by uh, Shen Weiwei and uh, Dai Shi, professors. So overprotection, um, this was demonstrated, for example, by the, by the Multatuli project. Multatuli project was set up by a user's rights group they uploaded snippets of the Max uh, Planck, uh, sorry, Max uh, Havelaar uh, um, uh, book. Um, Multatuli is one of the most famous uh, Dutch authors. He wrote about uh, all the, 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 the bad things that the Dutch uh, people did in, um, 
the former colony in, uh, called uh, Dutch East Indies, now Indonesia. Um, and they uploaded to 10 Dutch online service providers with a disclaimer that the works uh, were actually in the public domain. And then it pretended to be a, a, a rights holder and sent notice and takedown uh, requests. And then seven out of the 10 online service providers, they uh, removed the works. So it leads to false positives. Uh, so in other words, uh, we apply a kind of, um, if we, we use the filter bubble terminology of uh, Tsai Peru, uh, the remaining content is visible in a way that um, um, it's in a way a big bubble of authorized content, you could argue. So with 500 uh, hours uploaded per minute, YouTube can no longer be uh, uh, manually uh, assess copyright infringement, so it's not scalable, of course. Um, so a lot of works were uh, taken down, as you can see, 757.9 million but 0.5% of the cases were uh, disputed. So that's quite a lot. That is uh, three point, uh, almost 3.7 million cases. And you can imagine that there were many more because many um, users uh, might not have the time or they don't have, they don't, um, uh, are not in the mood or they feel intimidated to do something about uh, the, the works that they wanted to upload but were removed. So the number of false positives is probably much higher, especially since automatic content recognition algorithms at this moment uh, are not able to take exceptions and limitations into account. Um, and also the three-step test that each uh, jurisdiction that is a member of the Berne Convention and the uh, uh, TRIPS uh, agreement uh, should take into account. Okay, so with impunity, uh, opportunistic platforms, sometimes with or without uh, um, the, the copyright holders, uh, seem to be able to reduce the traffic via uh, maybe directly or via deranking de um, to users that unauthorizedly upload the copyrighted work, uh, no matter whether it is legal or not. Uh, because of this opaqueness of this process, users can hardly detect that it is happening they can suspect it, but they cannot prove it. And maybe they see a break in the trend of the visitors to a certain uploaded uh, content on a platform. But this can have several reasons. Here you see, for example, the uh, relevance uh, ranking algorithm as uh, suggested by uh, a search engine optimization uh, company, SparkToro, but, but you don't know because it's all trade secrets. So. Um, <clears throat> the degree of visibility of, of content on YouTube is not only uh, determined by the click-through rates uh, and the average uh, view duration, but also whether works are authorized and whether there are copyright claims or strikes against the uploader. So YouTube Content ID lets the copyright holder claim the content and instead of submitting a notes and take down request, uh, he or she can track the video's uh, performance block it on a country-by-country -country basis, so this is also kind of reduction of traffic, of course, or choosing to monetize the video by placing ads on it. And during this track performance phase, the, the, and they say, the claim may affect the views of the uploader's content as the copyright owner may restrict the video from appearing on certain websites, devices, or even various countries. So this is a kind of soft ban. So, Another option for the copyright holder is to let YouTube um, give two warnings uh, to the copyright holder, so-called copyright strikes. After the first strike, the alleged infringer needs to go to a uh, copyright school, which is a kind of online course. Um, after the first and second uh, strikes, uh, YouTube may reduce the visibility uh, to the channel um, in the results or reduce the recommendations, uh, which results in fewer views and subscribers. So there's obviously no redress mechanism for a reduction of traffic that cannot be detected with certainty. So, and then there is, uh, of course, the, the license, uh, the, 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 terms of license uh, the terms of service between the um, platform and the uploader, where the first limits its liability and the latter de facto agrees with any uh, curatorial interventions. Um, but which is 
arguably not compatible to fundamental rights such as the right to freedom of expression guaranteed by the exceptions and limitations. So the exceptions and limitations um, are important. Uh, they, they need to be balanced with the copyright's private rights and, and public interest. But many of these um, exceptions and limitations are uh, open norms, uh, as you can see here in red color. And AI at this moment cannot take them into account. But who knows, right? With GPT-5, maybe that, that uh, uh, if we are uh, optimistic. Um, if you look at uh, Article 21.1 um, uh, and the number 13 of the copyright law of the uh, PRC of 2020, it states, and I will quote for you, other circumstances provided for by laws and administrative regulations. So this is a kind of open norm. And since 2004, at least some Chinese courts have been willing to apply fair use principles, uh, despite the lack of fair use in the corporate law uh, of 2010 and also in 2020, but still. And then in 2011, the Supreme People's Court even issued an opinion where they say in a special case um, of use that promotes innovation and business development, a more flexible limitation regime is admissible if it comports with the four factor, uh, four uh, fair use factors, um, as here you can see uh, on the right hand side of the slide, uh, as inspired by uh, Title 17 US Code Section 107. Okay, so uh, in general one can argue AI can figure out when there is transformation, okay, so maybe, right, this is an optimistic view. Um, we know that algorithms are black boxes, the workings are hidden, Deep learning algorithms are dynamic, which leads to even more uh, predictability. Okay, so the main question, whether traffic, uh, whether reduction of traffic to content that is not authorized, and no matter whether it is legal or illegal, by the copyright holder is compatible to the recommendation algorithm regulation. Um, so if we look at articles one and six, it basically says you need to balance the rights of the interests of users and platforms and copyright holders, uh, which would guarantee a vital medium of expression, minimum levels of IP infringements, you could argue. This is, is not taking exceptions limitations uh, uh, into account, uh, which seems to violate article 35 of the constitution of the PRC, which basically says uh, there should be freedom of speech. Then you have Article 4 and 12 and 16 uh, of the uh, regulation of uh, uh, algorithmic recommendations. They prescribe a, a, a kind of white box algorithm uh, and the optimization of this particular transparency. So since platforms, uh, they shall inform the users of which conduct is prohibited, it should be logical that at least the uploader is informed that the traffic to some content is reduced ex ante or at least ex post, you could argue, so that he or she can oppose this procedure in accordance with uh, the regulation. The need for the resources uh, and setting up uh, of the enforcement mechanism we can find in Article 6.2. Uh, Article 9 uh, of the regulation says, uh, the transmission of unlawful information shall immediately be seized upon uh, once discovered and measured, uh, sorry, and measures shall be employed to eliminate it or otherwise address it, or otherwise address it. So this leaves open, actually, the possibility of deranking um, or uh, re uh, reducing the, 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 uh, the content of suspected content or decrease the content. So that is, uh, leaves open this possibility. Article 5. Um, of the regulation says uh, there should be self-regulation, also discussed by Hu Ling, um, but where you can uh, arguably say, well, uh, actually the government has, has a big role here to, uh, to play, uh, uh, maybe a government, is, uh, a government institute is needed. Okay, let's have a quick look at what is happening in the EU. Uh, in 2021, the European Commission proposed the um, algorithmic um, sorry, the, the uh, Artificial Intelligence Act uh, draft. So Cao Tian Feng already uh, discussed the pyramid, symbolizing high risk, etc. You could argue that um, high risk um, 
includes uh, the fundamental rights, uh, Article 11, the Charter of the Fundamental Rights of the European Union of 2009, and Article 10 of the Convention for the Protection of Human Rights and Fundament Fundamental Freedoms of 1950. But these need to be balanced, of course, with Article 17, 1 of the EU Charter to uh, Fundamental Rights, and Article 1 of the Protocol uh, Number 1 of the European Convention of Human Rights of 1952, uh, which protects property and also applies to intellectual property. So, you know, fundamental rights, uh, intellectual property is also a kind of fundamental right. So that is, needs to be balanced. Um, the Court of Justice of the European Union has held in the Republic of Poland versus uh, a European Parliament that exceptions and limitations are a fundamental right and have to be taken into account in the enforcement of uh, platforms. So... Um, the penultimate uh, uh, slide, right? So, uh, you, so these were some of the um, uh, conclusions that uh, were that you can draw from the the AIA draft, the EU one, right? So, code is law. Uh, stakeholder dialogues need to be. Um, Established, actually, that is what also Professor Liu uh, referred to, a kind of duty of collaboration, stakeholders, important. Um, and it should not be overridden by contracts of technology. And it would be nice if AI uh, would be first sandboxed, so you can see what actually is the, the bandwidth of the, the outcomes. Okay, last slide, conclusions. Um, China and the EU take a cautious approach to algorithms compared to the US. Uh, US, uh, they say, uh, they ask for forgiveness, not permission, uh, which is maybe good for innovation, but maybe not, uh, so it has some societal uh, downsides. Exceptions limitations are the breathing space for, uh, for, 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 the, for copyright, uh, you can argue, for the internet. Um, Deranking or reducing traffic is an extra legal measure not compatible to fundamental rights such as the freedom of expression. Um, in that case, there is no redress mechanism and transparency is necessary. One can argue fundamental rights preempt licenses and um, if automatic content recognition algorithms uh, do not take exceptions limitations into account, uh, this will lead to chilling effects. Um, and yes, um, it's all a transitory problem, but uh, so is almost everything, right? Uh, to, to quote uh, Professor Tai Xin. Okay, that, that was what, uh, what uh, I had to, to say about this. Thank you very much for your attention and looking forward to any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much for both of our uh, wonderful presentations and I'm opening the floor uh, to questions. Thank you so much for uh, two wonderful presentations. Um, I have a question to Professor Liu also uh, is relevant to uh, Professor Feldman's perspective. Um, I guess what Professor Liu did is to showing us a very interesting and important cases that we are having today regarding the uh, recommendation system, but putting in the uh, context of IP law. Uh, so the idea that uh, the idea is that recommending content is no problem. The real problem is that uh, recommending pirated content or illegal content, we should say. Um, so then the question turns into uh, what is the obligations of the platform uh, when they try to filter or control the recommended uh, pirated content. Uh, I totally agree with you that even with some kind of autonomy, uh, it's still too far away to say that they are direct infringer. And so we still need to apply the, the old school uh, contributory or vicarious infringement in this case. And that goes to uh, the theory or the idea of duty of care, uh, as well as uh, the implementation, whether the platform has the uh, abilities to implement some kind of technical standards uh, like, for example, content ID in our own system. Uh, but this reminds me to draw an analogy on another case that we are using daily. Uh, 
uh, the search engine. I, I can't remember the last time that I typed a website address by myself, right? So every time we use all kinds of recommendation system, and the most important one, or the top gatekeeper, is the search engine. They recommend contents, and sometimes they recommend it bad contents, illegal contents. And I'm embarrassed to say that because I'm a Fujianese, but the most famous case in, uh, in, in, in China is the Baidu, Baidu one. They recommended the really horrible uh, hospitals because they pay the, the search engine, so uh, they receive really horrible services, uh, the users. So I, I, I was trying to uh, ask whether, or maybe Professor Liu can, can help us to better understand like what's the differences between the uh, content platform recommending a pirated content, also illegal, um, and the responsibility for the general search engine like Baidu being Google when they recommended some illegal or uh, sometimes pirate content. So do they bear the same kind of duty of care? Because obviously uh, the platform has more control over their content, but uh, in the meantime, we also see uh, there are course references in, in, in video or audio content platforms. Like for example, if I search a uh, a video, a key in a, a, for example, TV series name, and then they will pop up uh, video contents from other platforms. So it's also looking, uh, looks like a search engine as well. So I was wondering if there's any uh, similarities or differences between these two scenarios. Thank you. Thank you for Professor Shen's uh, very quick, quick very question about the difference uh, among different uh, business models, and uh, probably uh, we should we need to uh, uh, discuss whether there are really uh, really differences, uh, substantial differences between uh, these different modes, so that we need to apply different legal uh, legal rules or legal standards. I can think of the first uh, significant difference between the search engine. Of course, we, we can say that uh, both uh, from search engine or like e-commerce e platform, we also use keywords to search what we want, and they will have this ranking, right? And uh, for this part, we probably could uh, split them into two steps. One step is what uh, the user uh, key uh, uh, input, what we want, right? That, that we uh, started, we, we actually started the whole procedure. We want something infringing or we want something illegal, right? Uh, and then the algorithm or the provider, they will give us a ranking um, of all the, the, of course, they have doing their calculation and they are putting something uh, prior to others. Uh, th this is the same in the, the uh, traditional e-commerce or traditional content providers. Uh, for example, the, the, we call it a long video uh, platform error. Uh, but the, at the uh, scenario we, we are talking about today about the, the, the IGE or the case, it's actually when we uh, look, watched some infringing contents, then we do nothing, and the next time we open up the APP, uh, the, the APP will just give us what we want. So. Uh, technically, there is the one-step difference. Uh, the, the, the users start up the whole procedure, or the, actually we do nothing, and the platform recommend us. And this probably will also uh, distinguish the pure recommendation, and uh, some users' operation plus uh, uh, platform's recommendation, right? For the, for the, the, the search engine or the e-commerce uh, scenario, we usually will have no such difference to uh, think about whether there should be a, a, a higher or where should be a, the direct uh, a liability. Uh, we usually use a, a duty of care standard developed already by the court. They already handled a lot of cases. And they are talking about uh, if there is a so-called high-risk scenarios, the platform need to do more thing. But they originally they do not have a general duty to monitor or filter. So now the question is when we users do nothing, and the, originally they are recommending whether they need to do more duty of care. I think that probably will be a very uh, uh, rough answer to the question. I'm not quite sure whether. I see. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, 
Great presentation. It's also really fascinating. So I, I actually have a question for each of the speakers. So uh, starting with Professor Freeman. So um, de-ranking or reduction of uh, traffic, uh, fascinating sort of mechanisms. Actually, of, of course, you know, uh, before you actually mentioned it, I didn't really think there were a lot. But then, uh, as you describe it, I, I probably we have seen that, you know, uh, somewhere. Um, and also, I think the idea is okay. So previously. Uh, the thing we were asking the platforms or the um, you know the, the internet service providers, so as to, you know the, that's the you know uh, more general uh, sort of like re reference we say to this category of uh, players, uh, we were expecting them to um, make the judgment of whether uh, or at least we're asking them to differentiate the treatment of legal and illegal content. So that's sort of like a bipolar kind of judgment that decision you have to make. Uh, but of course, there are a lot of um, you know uh, um, status in the middle ground, right? So then maybe I think this would just suggest, given that they have all these different kind of tools and instruments and sort of like a strategy they can do in terms of dealing with the contents or material on uh, on their platform, so that you can uh, do deranking, you can reduce traffic, and also in some other contests or even in the IP in the copyright content, we also have labeling, right? For example, we're not really just taking it down, but we're just labeling, okay, this one is being disputed in terms of like, what, uh, it might actually be uh, copyright uh, infringing. Uh, but uh, in that case, so apparently on one hand, you know, given that now we're not only dealing with some, uh, you know, old school or the conventional search engine, we're actually dealing with algorithmic recommendation uh, powered uh, kind of platform so that Obviously, they can become uh, increasingly granular in terms of dealing with all these kind of different situations. So, which um, you know, uh, conceptually, that's a great thing, right? Because uh, we love that things become uh, dealt with, uh, you know, uh, using relatively narrow tailored kind of treatment to each of the, their situation. Uh, but at the same time, I think as you mentioned, that inevitably. It's going to give uh, the platforms or the, the user or the deployer, the operator of the algorithms, uh, uh, increasingly great, greater power, right? So uh, the problem is always, you know, there's not going to be any uh, way that, um, uh, for example, anybody else can really just uh, try to question, okay, so what, uh, how, how are you actually making the rules to differentiate, to, to make the, these, to put, um, you know, different material into these different categories, which are really kind of a granular, right? So you have not just legal or illegal. So if, in that case, even there's going to be chilling effect that's um, relatively, uh, I think, still there's a high level of predictability, right? So I know, okay, so if I'm not legal, then you put me into illegal. So uh, it's relatively stable kind of situation that I can predict. But then now you have 10 categories, for example, that 10 boxes that I might, I, might, I don't know, uh, I have like 10% or I don't even know the, the, the odds which uh, you know, box I'm going to uh, get into. So there's going to be greater uncertainty for the people who are going to use or upload uh, or use the platform to distribute their contents, right? So I guess, the, I, I'm not sure if you agree, so that actually uh, created a lot of even more this uh, possibility of disputes that that's going to be targeting uh, the platforms, right? So even the platform might not like it, right? They say, okay, why why are you making my um, you know like my my job my day so complicated? I actually prefer going back to the easy days of notice takedown, right? So I don't I, you know, why why should I do that? So so that might be one, and then the second uh, question or uh, the possibility is the other angle. If we look uh, from the see from the angle of um, the uploaders or the you know the whole the, the the you know like the user that's uh, distributing the materials on platform uh, from their perspective does that make all so much difference in terms of okay my uh, uploaded material get blocked or uh, I got uh, traffic reduced right does that make a whole lot of difference given that you know what's scared now the scares nowadays really just not you know traffic or eyeballs right so if you're reducing my traffic it's basically you're killing me right you're really just blocking me from the platform so does that make so much difference so that that might actually goes back to the first point i was making which is the pl uh, how much incentive the platform actually has in terms of trying to do all these distinctions right so so uh, so this is for the question for uh, professor freeman uh, and then i have actually one point for uh, professor liu which i think is interesting uh, so toward the end, uh, you're saying uh, the current uh, kind of a regime uh, seems to impose uh, duty of care 
primarily or even one-sided upon the platforms or, for example, search engines, right? Uh, or, or the uh, you know the uh, the recommendation algorithms, uh, uh, you know, designer or developer. Um, but uh, I think actually, so if we consider or think about the current law we have, which is the node and take down regime, so that is actually bilateral care. I think you know in terms of non economics of course, right? So that's uh, basically notice. Notice take down basically says, okay, the victim or the uh, the putative victim, you have to uh, take some effort to identify to discover potential infringement, and you have to uh, you know do the do the trick or go go through the drill of uh, you know sending in um, the uh, uh, the notice, right? Uh, so so that's the part on on the victim, uh, and then you know so so basically it, it even it's for the platforms uh, the the duty of care is actually less or lesser than a general kind of tortfeasor under uh, a sort of uh, you know uh, negligence uh, standard of care. So, so, so that actually uh, makes me wonder. Um, so, what we're actually doing here is not really just to requiring uh, collaborative, or uh, we're just trying to shift, um, you know, the the duty of care regime from one-sided duty of care to bilateral or or even multilateral kind of care. We're really just trying to say, look, you know, the notice takedown uh, is not imposing enough uh, burden. On the person who might actually be the lowest or the cheapest uh, avoider of uh, cost, right? Cheapest cost avoider of the risk, right? So we're actually saying, look, you know, there might be it might be uh, marginally efficient for us, from uh, given uh, the current situation, to ask uh, the platform to do a little bit more, um, which might be marginally efficient in the sense that the marginal uh, cost. Uh, of of care on the uh, you know platform might actually uh, be justifiable by the significantly higher marginal uh, benefit of uh, you know of the copyright protection, for example, that's going to be shared by the by the society or uh, the right holders. And of course, you know they're going to. So that's actually a putative one because uh, you might counter to say, look, you know, any any further or any additional care that we're asking the platform to do might not be justified in terms of efficiency because um, you might actually tamper tamper too much uh, uh, with the algorithm, so they may no longer be useful, uh, or they might actually it might affect the function functionality of the algorithm in other aspects, right? So, so, so this is how I sort of interpret this situation. But uh, wonderful presentations, thank you. Professor Friedman. <clears throat> thank you, Gilad. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor uh, Dai. A very interesting question. Um, <clears throat> well, you're right. Uh, the, uh, there is absolutely no uh, incentive for, for platforms to, to uh, take into account exceptions limitations. Eh? That, that's because of the safe, uh, sorry, the, the, the strict liability. Um, and we also have to take into account if you follow the money, that's also always a good thing to do. Um, then you see that the platforms, they sell information to copyright holders. So there's a really good connection between platforms and copyright holders. Uh, sometimes copyright holders uh, advertise on the platform. So there's a good connection between those uh, parties. Um, but not so much with, with the users and their uh, interests. So uh, what, what needs to be done, it, it needs to be, you can imagine you could, um, when you upload something, there should already be directly information on, on the sidebar. That is also what the, the regulations for uh, algorithmic recommendation says, right? There should be something good, uh, uh, navigatable um, thing on, on the website. And also for... Um, for, for the uh, platforms, it should um, they should provide information if the users want to find out. Hey, why why was this? Uh, w why is the traffic not uh, going as expected? They, they should be um, upfront and and transparent about that. Um, uh, I, I like the you, you mentioned uh, or, or you you said well the, you 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 gave a presentation about copyright and indeed it you could also make it more broad. Um, uh, I've got a, a friend who published on uh, on Amazon self publication um, and then suddenly he found out that his uh, book on bricks, good book uh, by by Professor uh, uh, Rosam Neuwirth, was not much. Uh, uh, you couldn't almost not find it. 
And, um, and that was because uh, probably Amazon has their own preferences and they, they, they show more of, of uh, other bricks, books uh, that they uh, get a higher uh, cut out of. So um, does, does, that question, does that answer your question uh, to, to some extent? Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, we thank for uh, for the suggestion. Actually, it's a suggestion, right? To uh, broaden maybe the uh, the the conclusion uh, to to taking into the current bilateral uh, mechanism of uh, notice and take on. It's very enlightening. And uh, also, uh, I want to explain that in terms of the platform liability, actually, we could uh, we we now have two tracks. The first one is uh, notice and take down. That means if there's notice, uh, the, the platform take down this so-called safe harbor, right? But the other track is about even if there's no notice at all, yeah, they should bear also duty of care to positively to do something. And now in the uh, debating of the cases, actually notice take down does not really have much debates because this is a procedure. But the right holders, rather they're uh, holding that um, uh, notice is not really efficient. There's too many uh, pirates and uh, they, they, they actually they do not want to bear so many costs to uh, to send out all the notices maybe maybe like uh, 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 thousands of notices one day they they, they are uh, claiming that it's not cost effective and that they want the platform to do more uh, even there if there's no notice or uh, in some cases they are arguing that if we send out a, a general notice. That means we do not tell you the specific link or the specific user, the, the uploaders. We just t tell you there's a Yan Xi Gong TV series pirated uh, taking place on, the, on your platform, and you need to take all the measures to take all the pirated version down. That's actually not notice, right? That's just a, a claim, and the, uh, the platform should bear the higher duty of care. So probably I'm talking about this is a one side duty of care and they should uh, shift some burden or cost to the right holders. But of course your, um, your, your, your suggestion about the, the marginal analysis is very enlightening. I will probably change some of my parts to uh, try to uh, put the notice and take down as also a, a marginal uh, analysis uh, examples into the whole conclusion. Thank you very much. So we have to end here. Uh, please uh, join me in thanking our, our wonderful presenters.